Hello teachers and dear learners. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education, IGNO and your course instructor for your course learning and teaching. In previous session, we have already discussed about reflection, its approaches in theories, what reflection is, what are different models of reflection, how a teacher can be a good reflective practitioner. This is a question which each of us need to deal with. So in today's discussion, I am going to talk about your role as a teacher, as a reflective practitioner. I have already told you about a three-level progression model of von Menon, where Menon has talked about technical level of reflection, practical level of reflection, and critical level of reflection. I have also discussed about a very famous model of Donald Schoen, where I have talked about reflection in action, reflection on action, and reflection for action. And I urged that as a teacher, you need to learn all the three types of reflection. Means, how you need to reflect when you are going for your class, means reflection for action. How you can reflect during the class means reflection in action and how you can reflect after the class means reflection on action. In any reflective process, teacher is at the center. Teacher need to reflect on three things about the learner and learner's behavior, about the content, how he or she has dealt with the content or how he or she will deal with the content and the context in which teaching learning will take place. So when a teacher reflect, a teacher reflect about the learners, about the content and about the context. So there is a very famous design of reflection which is called four hours of reflection. That is called recollection, reaction, relevance and responsibility. What is recollection? When you try to reflect on something which have already happened, what you do? You try to capture or recall the movement which have already has happened. You try to summarize the key experiences which you have gained during your teaching learning or during your practice. You try to highlight the experiences which are more important or more prominent. You try to provide the facts and context to those experiences that why that experience you have gained, what was the context of that experience, what are the facts responsible for that. Then comes the reaction, second R. In reaction, you try to engage in the affective domain means what was your attitude, beliefs and feelings. You re-examine your description of the events which you have done in the previous step and issues which are in the focus and you try to understand why are you feeling so about it. How are you feeling about it now? You try to connect the dots for your learners, then comes the relevance. In relevance step, you engage the cognitive domain of thinking, how the factors and feelings were related to each other. What is known to you about your teaching learning? How do these connects of your acquired research and knowledge bases? Does this information extend your understanding of teaching and learning in new ways? So you also try to analyze the reference and how this reflection is meaningful to you. When you talk about relevance, you also talk about what impact has it had on you? What are the new possibilities which you see? What perspectives? have changed or been added. So be as specific as possible to make this reflection concrete and substantive by being a name dropper of the theorist program and best practice researcher to anchor and support your claim. So don't follow others views or don't just be a name dropper. He has, Shohan has shown something that's why I'm doing this. Van Menon has given this model that's why I'm doing this. No. You just derive the idea from there that what they have suggested how to reflect and be your own anchor and reflect in your own way and support your claims 
while you are reflecting. This makes you responsible. So the last R of the four R is responsibility. You engage the psychomotor domain of the doing. How does the new information or the new knowledge has been gained? How can you apply it to the teaching learning process? What else do you need to know? Who else can give you the insight on your practices? What resources should be consulted? What are the possible next steps for the immediate future or applications for your future in the classroom? So, you not only reflect what has been done, you also take responsibility of your practices. So what are the common features of the reflection? Reflections result in learning through changing ideas and your understanding of the situation. It is basically an active process of learning and is more than thinking or thoughtful action. It involves problematizing teaching by recognizing that practice is not without dilemma or issues. When we talk about reflection, it is a cyclical process where reflection leads to the development of new ideas which are then used to plan the next stage of learning. It encourages looking at issues from different perspectives which helps you to understand the issue and scrutinize your own value, assumptions and perspectives. How you can promote reflection? First thing is that if you want to promote reflection in your learners, you make them aware of their learning needs. You ask your learners to become aware of their learning needs. Consider multiple perspectives of the issues under consideration. Means you should encourage your learners to view the same thing from different perspectives, from different angles. Try to find out the useful experiences and reflect on these experiences in details. How you can be a good reflective practitioner? In our teaching teacher training programs, we always suggest you to write your teacher diary, reflective diary or teacher narratives. How these narratives can help you in reflection? Let us see. You know what is a teacher narrative? It is about writing something about your daily experiences in the classrooms. You describe different events or instances which have been taken place during your teaching practice. And you share these narratives with your peer group. You discuss these narratives with your peer groups or the members of your group at length. You try to listen the experience of the others on the same narrative. So the point is that you need to step outside of your own personal experiences and try to analyze yourself as other teachers in a particular teaching learning situation. So don't view yourself with your perspective but also try to view your practices and yourself from others perspectives, from others peers perspective. You can ask your uh, you know, colleague to sit in your class and to notice your all behavior and later on they can give you a narrative and you can reflect that what others are observing about your teaching learning. Another very effective tool is reflective journals or reflective diaries. Because it is a mean of communication or conversation with oneself and the material tutors and peers and it helps to develop critical thinking. In reflective journals you reflect on and develop insight into the purpose of school experiences programs. You highlight critical issues that may not have been considered by you at the time of your class and you reflect on your own strengths and weaknesses. So when you prepare your reflective journal what you need to write? For example, you are preparing your reflective diary and you have been asked to prepare your reflective diary in your teacher training program. So first you write a brief summary of your lecture which you are going to deliver or the practice teaching or the lab activity or the group discussion whatever you are going to organize or some material which you are going to use. Then reflect that how you will use these in your own thoughts, ideas, responses and reactions. Then when you teach by using it, you reflect again that how you have used it and you try to compare both. You make notes of the concepts, questions and confusions which are coming in your mind when you are using these things. You also note the important events of the school experience and internship program 
you try to explore the possible solution of the problems which are being raised in the classroom. You try to record new insights or problem solving strategies in a creative or innovative way. My suggestion is that some thoughts may not be fully conceptualized at the time of writing, but when you write it, they may need further clarification at the starting, but when you write it as a practice, you keep on reflecting on that and you keep on clarifying them. So dear teachers, either you are a trainee teacher or you are a practicing teacher, my suggestion to you is that please make a reflective diary. And reflective diary is not a diary where you write today I went to school, today I took this class, today I took two periods, in first period I taught this subject. No, this is not reflection. Reflection is that if I am going to teach a particular concept, why I am going to teach this concepts? What are the objectives in my mind? What I am expecting from my learners? What methods or tools are appropriate to explain these concepts? Then when you are in the class and you find that you need to modify your teaching because reflection in action is very important, then you come back and again reflect back that what you have planned in the morning, whether you have gone through with the same way or you require changes. Why these changes were required? Was there some problem with your idea or about uh, your understanding about your learner's knowledge? Whether you have not identified any method properly or you have not used any appropriate a tool or teaching learning material which may you need to use. So in future you need to improve. It will help in improving your teaching learning for the next class. So my dear teachers, my suggestion to you is that write reflective diaries, make it a practice and a habit and be a reflective practitioner. Thank you very much.